My name's Ian Richardson, and I'm going to introduce you to the basics of video coding. I'm going to show you some of the techniques that make it possible to compress video files and make them hundreds of times smaller. For example, in this folder on my computer, I have an uncompressed video file, over 800 megabytes, and a compressed version of the same file, which is less than 600 kilobytes. How is it possible to compress video by such an amount? Here's the basic idea of video coding. Raw or uncompressed video takes up a lot of space, so it's not practical to store it or transmit it in its original form. A video encoder compresses video into a much smaller size, suitable for storing in memory, sending over a network or broadcasting. The compressed video has to be decompressed by a video decoder before it can be displayed. Put together the encoder and the decoder and we have a codec. Video codecs are everywhere. For example, your smartphone encodes video from its camera before saving it on the phone's memory. It will decode video from memory or from a YouTube stream before displaying it. You'll find video codecs inside phones, cameras, laptops, TVs, and so on. Most video codecs contain the same basic building blocks. These include partitioning, prediction, transform, and entropy encoding. And you can see that each one of these in the encoder has a counterpart in the decoder. It's important that a video encoder and a video decoder can talk to each other and interoperate. For example, if I take a video using my phone and send it to you using Beamshare, I want to know that you'll be able to play it back on your phone or your iPad or your computer. One way to make this work is to use a standard for video coding. The shaded area here is what will be covered by a standard. A video coding standard typically specifies a compressed video format and a method of decoding that compressed video format, but it won't tell you exactly how to encode video. In practice, an encoder that's compliant with the standard has to produce a compressed file in the right format so that a standard compliant decoder can decompress it successfully. There are actually a whole lot of standards. Each one is a document that describes a video format and a decoding method in precise detail. Many of the basic concepts of video coding were developed in the 1970s and 1980s. This slide shows some of the major standards over the last 20 years, starting with MPEG-1 in the early 1990s, MPEG-2, which is the standard used for DVDs and digital TV, H.264, which is currently the main standard for video on the internet, on computers, on mobile devices, and for HD TV. And in 2013, we've already seen the publication of HEVC and VP9. Even though all of these standards and formats use the same building blocks and the same basic concepts, things keep getting better. For example, a well-designed H.264 video codec should give you at least twice the compression of an MPEG-2 codec. It's early days for HEVC but it looks like HEVC has the potential to be twice as good again. That means that an HEVC compressed video file could be half the size of an H.264 video file with the same original video and roughly the same image quality. So how does this happen? Part of the answer is that there's a fundamental trade-off in video coding. When we compress video, we can trade between picture quality, compression ratio, and computation. For example, it's possible to get better compression, better picture quality, or both of these, if we can throw more computing power at the video compression problem. So one of the reasons that video compression performance keeps getting better 
is that newer standards and newer devices use more sophisticated processing techniques. Processors are getting faster all the time, so it makes sense to use more computing power to improve video compression. Let's take a brief look at the main building blocks of our video codec, starting with partitioning. This is the way that we break up video into units for processing in a video codec. For example, we can break up or partition a video frame into rectangular areas known as slices or tiles. And then each slice or tile can be broken down further into square units known as macro blocks or coding tree units. A video codec will typically process a clip one macro block or CTU at a time. Here's a still frame from a video clip, and I've highlighted one macro block or coding unit, which you can see at the lower left here. Inside the video codec, this will typically be stored and processed as three components. Y is the luma or brightness of the displayed pixels. CR and CB are the red and blue color difference components. You can see that the CR and CB components are stored using half the resolution of the Y component. One reason for this is that the human eye is more sensitive to brightness than to color, so it makes sense to store the color difference components at a lower resolution. Next I'll look at prediction. Here's an example of prediction in action. On the left is a current video frame that we want to compress. The idea is to generate a prediction from data that we already have. In this case, I'm creating this prediction frame from a previous video frame, which is already available at the decoder and at the encoder. I've formed this prediction by searching the previous frame, one block at a time, for pixels that match the current frame. When I find a good match, I shift the pixels to create the prediction, which we see on the right here. It's not perfect. If you look closely, you can see some regions, like here and here, that are actually quite badly predicted. The overall effect is shown at the bottom here. When we subtract, subtract the prediction from the original, we end up with this residual or difference frame, which has very little information left in it. This is the first stage of real compression, where we're cutting down the information content by creating and subtracting a prediction. So the next stage is the transform and quantizer. Here's the general idea. On the left I'm showing a typical block of image samples or pixel samples. In any region of the picture we're going to have a range of brightnesses or sample levels. And each one of these is stored as a number each number is important, so we can't just throw, them, throw one of them away, and each one takes space in the video file. The idea of a video coding transform is to convert a block of image samples into a frequency domain representation, such as the example in the middle here. In a video encoder, we typically follow the transform with a quantization stage which removes small or insignificant values. So instead of the 16 samples or numbers on the left, we have this transformed and quantized block on the right. And most of the numbers here are zero, which means that this block here is going to be much easier to store in a highly compressed form. And if we do this in the right way, it's possible to reverse this process and get a decoded image block that looks almost the same as the original. So the final stage is entropy coding. You can think of this as general purpose data compression. Here's a small example from the H.264 standard. On the left we have a series of pieces of information produced by the video encoder. Each of these items on the left, which we call syntax elements, is mapped to a number of bits on the right. So to put all of this together, the video encoder takes in uncompressed video. It splits it up into frames and then partitions these into blocks or regions for processing. 
the encoder predicts each block, for example, from previous video frames or from nearby regions, and subtracts the prediction. The result of this is transformed and quantized, which has the effect of throwing away information that's not very important to the image. All of these stages feed into the entropy encoder, which organizes and compresses the data into a compact binary form. Decoder reverses these stages to produce decoded video. Now, Because of the quantization stage in particular, the video output is not likely to be a perfect copy of the video input. I'm going to go back to the two files that I showed at the start of the talk. First of all, here's the uncompressed version, which takes up a massive 830 megabytes of disk space for a 10 second clip. And now let's look at the same file, compressed and decompressed, using HEVC. If you're watching this online, you won't necessarily notice a big difference. The HEVC version isn't quite as detailed, quality isn't quite as good, but on the other hand, it takes up a thousand times less space on my computer hard disk. So I hope you found this introduction to video coding useful. To find out more, have a look at some of my free tutorials and resources on H264, HEVC and video coding at vcodex.com. Thanks for listening.